In this video, we're going to have a quick look at an experimental new way of describing questionnaire specifications. And to do that, we're actually going to build a questionnaire in a tool that allows us to, using this new structured way, actually get a greater understanding of what our survey is trying to achieve or our questionnaire is trying to achieve, while also making it easier to see on the fly changes as they happen. Now, this tool that we've got here is Canard, a beta piece of software that I'm producing for, for managing these structured questionnaires. On the left we have the question module itself, so all of the content needed for that. In the middle is a large editing pane where we'll see content come up as we make it. And on the right we have a preview pane so we can see different ways of viewing our questionnaire as we create it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and describe what our module is actually trying to do. And the module that we're going to build today is on brand X ice cream. So we're going to add some text and we're going to give it a title and we're going to give it a respondent and we're going to say that we're, we're currently targeting for this um, module itself um, all people that we can get our hands on, so everyone. And that's all we need to do really at this stage, we're just describing a, a part of a, a questionnaire, so we're going to move on and we're going to start asking some information, we're going to get some content and already our preview pane's updated and we've, we can see that the, at the new question we've added here um, has some information about it and it started to draw a flowchart and we're going to put in some context around this question and it's going to be asking about ice cream purchases. So have you purchased ice cream in the last six months? And we can see that we already know from the module itself that it's being asked of all persons. A nice and simple one. Here what we're going to do is we're going to drag in this object that allows us to split based on this question. I'm going to try that again. We're going to split based on this question and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to branch off into, into one specific group and we're just going to ask about purchases. Um, please tell me um, about purchases. That's all I want to know. And I'm really only targeting purchases for this one. So this is the branch itself. I'm targeting purchases. And how do I know who's going to be getting to this area? Well, um, to get to this branch, I can drag it up here and I can drag this question across and go, if this question is yes, so if, and we'll review this question, if you have purchased ice cream in the last six months, um, I'll be targeting you. And we're going to add one more question in here, and we'll remove this statement. But this question is just going to be about flavour. What's your favourite flavour of ice cream? So, once I've finished doing this, what we can see on the right is we can see that we're starting to build up this flowchart. If you answered yes to this purchase question, we'll ask this flavour question, otherwise you'll continue on to the end. Um, you can see up here we've already got this undescribed population based on this targeted pu targeted purchases area. So we'll add some context here, and when we add that in, we'll say we're really targeting in this branch, just in this specific branch, people who've purchased ice cream in the last six months. And we go back to our flavour question and it's people who've purchased ice cream in the last six months and all persons. So we know exactly who this flavour question is asking and we can skip over to our preview pane and we can see we're starting to build a web server already um, without having to do very much at all. So we'll skip back to the flowchart because that gives us a, a nice overview of everything that's happening and the, the preview is still very rough in its current stage. So what else do we want to know? Well, um, we want to know more about Brand X. So we're going to ask a, a question of everyone, we're going to bring everyone back together again and this question is, you know, do you actually know about Brand X? Um, so we'll give it a name and we'll ask, do you know about Brand X? And as we add this in, you can see our flowchart on the right is updated. So um, we know that everyone's going to be asked this question. Um, it's the same on the right in this flowchart as it is on the left, and we can preview it. Whoops. And refresh that. And do you know about Brand X? So it's starting to come together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to branch a little bit more because people who know about Brand X, well, I want to know a little bit more about that as well. So if you don't know about it, we want to ask some information about that too. So again, we've got a new branch here. Um, and this branch is going to be for people who don't know about brand X. We, we want to know why they don't know about us. So we can add some content in here and we'll add another question to this branch and remove the default statement because we're not going to be looking at that today. And we'll ask, whoops, Sorry, and we'll ask of them, um, who is your preferred ice cream, if any? You know, we don't know about that. Um, so we want to find out, you know, if they don't know about Brand X, who, who is their preferred one? And again, we've got an undescribed population, so we'll go to our don't know section and add 
a nice little target respondent, so people who don't know about brand X. So here we go, we know exactly who's being targeted in this question and um, we can update here and we can start seeing that all of our little skip statements are coming together. And if we go back to our flowchart, it's starting to build up a nice little uh, pattern of what's happening here. So how do we know who doesn't know about brand X? Well, we can come back to our tree and again we drag up the don't know branch and we'll go that if know about brand X is no, so if it's equal to no, we know that they're in that branch. So we're starting to build up quite a nice little structure here. Um, but we also, we want to know about people who do know about brand X. And for the people who do know about brand X, well, um, that we can make the default. So, whoops, we want to, we'll just drag this up here. So you do know about brand X if that's equal to yes. And the default will be don't know. So that's how we'll know who's who. So we'll come over here and we'll delete our extra question again, or our extra statement, and we'll start building up about people who do know about brand X. So we'll again add in that context about if you're in this branch, we know that you're people who do know about brand X. Now it seems kind of redundant to keep adding this information, but it does help us so that as we get deeper and deeper in, we can start to target exactly who is answering a specific question. And for people who do know about brand X, we want to know if they've seen our recent ad campaign. So we'll add a question here again. And have you seen the recent ad campaign? And we'll give this question a name. That's what we're giving it up the top. And after all that's done, we can start seeing, um, if you know about Brand X, then you go to the campaign question, which is good. And we're going to do a little bit more. We're going to actually try and get some more information from them. So we'll add our, another tree in here. And this tree, we're going to split on the campaign, and we're going to ask a couple of different things here. Um, not just about basic questions that have come beforehand. Um, we're going to ask about people who have purchased ice cream recently, and we're going to call them buyers. So we'll edit this brand name, and that's recent purchasers who have seen the campaign. And we're going to come back to our, all of our branches here, and we're going to add another branch, which is non-buyers. Um, seems pretty standard. Um, and lastly, we're going to add one about people who um, aren't targeted. Uh, they haven't seen the recent campaign. So we've got three different branches we're targeting here, based not only just on this campaign question, but a lot of information that's come beforehand. So how do we do that? Well, we come to our sequence guide, and we'll first say, um, if you're a buyer, um, you're someone who oh, um, has seen the campaign, so the campaign is yes, and also you have purchased. So we're going to drag this question all the way from the start and bring it down and go yes, you have purchased as well. And for our non-buyer, well we can reuse the same two questions. Um, the campaign this time is um, yes, you still have seen the campaign, and purchasing is no. So you didn't actually purchase recently. So that's how we've kind of segmented these two up. And if you're not one of those two, what we'll do is we'll make you, oops, come back here, there we go, um, a non-target. So people who aren't the target are the default. And we can see we've got these base questions again, so as we go through, we'll look at our buyers, and we can go recent purchases, our non-buyers, and we'll add some textual information about this, and non-buyers are non-purchasers who have seen the campaign. And lastly, our non-targeters, people who have not seen the campaign at all. And we'll add this in. And as you can see over here, um, our, our flowchart's starting to get quite big. Um, we'll try and expand that out a bit. So we can see that this, this uh, campaign is actually, or the, the, the targeting questionnaire about this campaign is actually starting to get quite complex. Um, and this is how a respondent may move through it as they move through a paper survey or, or through an interview. But on the left, it's actually quite straightforward. Um, we can actually see this nice hierarchy being built up. So now that we've got these people split out, um, we're going to add another question in here, and we'll remove our statement, because we're not going to be using those. And again, we can see the target respondent for this question, regardless of how deep it is, is actually quite simple. It's recent purchasers who've seen the campaign, and it's people who do know about the brand, and it's all persons. So we know exactly who this question's targeting. So we're going to add some text, and this is for our buyers. I'll just 
consulting my other information here. I don't design questionnaires usually. So I want to ask about impact. Um, did the recent campaign actually impact your decision? Oops, decision. So again, here we've split on our campaign and we've got the impact down here. And then we, after that we go to the end because there's no more questions over here. Um, but we'll fix that in a second. Uh, we'll add another question for our non-buyers. And we'll remove that silly little statement item. And we'll add some text here. And how could the campaign actually be improved to change your habits? And we'll give it a nice title. So this is improve. Now these names up here, um, the way they're designed in the, the underlying data structure, um, can actually be used to help uh, construct the data files that we're looking at as well in SAS. Or, uh, or SPSS or whatever software we're looking at actually analyzing the data we're going to collect using this or from something that's based on this. And lastly, we're going to add a question here for our people who've not been targeted. Oops. There. And remove this statement item and add some text in. Oops. And add some text in there. And can you explain how you know about brand X? Because obviously um, these people ha have not seen the campaign, but they do know about the brand, which is a good sign for us. They do know about the brand, um, and we want to know how they know about the brand. Um, we'll call these people non-viewers because they haven't seen our TV commercial, which we explained up here. Um, have you seen the brand X TV ca ad campaign? So no, they haven't. So, um, but they still know about the brand, which is good. So we'll compress all of this down. We'll get rid of this. So this is basically two very neat branches based on our respondents and we've got a very rich um, structure here being built up based on how these questions all fit together. And last but not least we're going to add one more question in. you've got to watch all of these arrows update over here. We're going to add one question in right at the end and that's about the slogan. So we're going to add some more text and we're going to add about the slogan does the brand X slogan ice cream is good make you want to buy ice cream? Well I hope so. Um, makes me want to buy ice cream. So we can see over here all of our arrows have updated to say that everybody is going to be answering this question as well because we can see as we compress all of these down we ask about purchasing and then we split up on our purchases. We ask about brand X and how people know about it and then based on that we'll split them again and then everyone comes back and we ask about the slogan. So we've basically constructed a very nice hierarchy that describes our entire survey has updated our flowchart so we know exactly how our respondent's going to move through it at any stage. And over here we can actually refresh our preview again and we can start seeing the, the, the web survey being built up with all of these links between it. And we can see that all of these different questions, uh, regardless of where they are, are all going to end up at the slogan. So that's um, basically a preview of the Canard Question Module Editor. And uh, that's a way of constructing questionnaires and having access to the updated specifications on the side and seeing what a respondent might view in real time. Thanks for watching.